So just out and about, having a little walk down by the sea, always good for the soul, right? Um, now this afternoon, there's gonna be a bit of uh, thinking out loud. Now what I'm gonna say in a minute is not what I think is gonna happen, not what I'm predicting is gonna happen. It's just me thinking out loud and you can agree or disagree. Doesn't really matter. I'm not telling you guys what to do, what to think, what to say. I'm just telling you what's in my mind. Now, since the riots back in the summer, the civil disturbance, we've gone through a lot of changes, haven't we? And some of those people were rightly sent to jail. Some of them. Not many that I've seen, but some of them did unquestionably break the law in a fashion that I would call bad. I think very few of them should have led to a prison sentence, but there were some unquestionably, and I would never condone any violence or bad behaviour, any out and out racism, the attacking of places of religion is wrong. There's no question about that. No ifs or buts. But we do know that there are people in jail right now that really shouldn't be there. Probably on both sides, but mostly those that were deemed to be far right, far right my ass. And since Keir Starmer came out with that far-right speech when the riots took place. I think everything has been going south. It's been, things have just been getting worse and worse and worse. I spoke to Andrew Bridgen earlier on and, you know, he was talking about the fact that the government probably thought that they'd quelled the situation and to a degree they, they did. We get that. We know, you know, Obviously, when there's trouble on the streets, you have to stop it, you have to put an end to it. But there has to be a strategy behind that, doesn't there? You can't rule a nation like the United Kingdom with an iron fist in hope that the population are gonna curtail and bow down to fear because we're British, right? We don't do that, we don't give in to fear, we don't give in to tyranny, we don't give in to bullying, we don't, we don't take it well, do we? And I believe that unfortunately the bad news is that all that anger, frustration is brewing up and we need to stop that. We don't want frustration, anger brewing up amongst any of our communities. And I don't really like using the word communities because we should all be one community, shouldn't we? Should be just the British community. Shouldn't matter about your race, colour, religion, where you were born. It should be about one community, one race, the human race, the British community. But the media, it seems to me, are doing their utmost right now to make sure that we stay firmly separated. And if they can widen that divide even further, then it seems that they're happy to do that. Look at the Chris Cabber situation. Now, I don't, I never knew Chris Cabber, obviously. Um, clearly, he was, do, he was doing things that were wrong. Um, but let's, let's get it right. If this was an ordinary, run-of-the-mill, average, English, white criminal that had gone out and have been shot. Would that police officer have been charged? Probably not, let's be honest. Probably not. And I haven't got a lot of time for the police, if I'm honest with you. I've always found them to be lazy, arrogant, um, what other words would I use to describe them? Unfair, dishonest, all of those things. That's my experience with the police. Having been a victim of crime on a number of occasions, I found them to be all of those things. 
However, I still support them. Because if you don't support, if you don't support the police, if you don't support law and order, you've got a massive problem, aren't you? I'll tell you what I do support. I do support the specialist groups like, I don't even know if they're still called SO19, the Armed Response Units, the Flying Squad, Robbery Squad, Murder Squad, all the specialist groups, serious crime, that deal with the serious stuff. They have my respect because I believe that on 99% of occasions they are proper people. I think the badness has filtered down at the lower end of the police forces or police services now, where they've all been imported from the left wing universities. They're running around with their rainbow flags on their vests. I mean, look, nothing wrong with that, but do we want to see that on our police services, on our police ship? Of course we don't. We just want them to get on and do what they should be doing, arrest the bad guys. But the media this week appeared to be doing a very determined effort to make sure that the black and the white community stay separated. We don't want them being too friendly, right? Let's make sure that we make this a black versus white thing when it actually is not. It's nothing to do with black versus white. And I would appeal to any person of colour watching this do not fall for it. You are not our enemy. We are not your enemy. Brothers and sisters, we're in this together. We've got to save this country together from tyranny. Organisations like the BBC, whose reporting on the Chris Cabber situation was frankly nothing but scandalous case for a lot of different people. Let's remember the context. We have a young, unarmed black man shot dead by a white police officer on the streets of London. Within weeks, there are demonstrations across the country with anti-racism protesters uh, claiming that Chris Cabot was Britain's George Floyd. George Floyd, you may remember, was shot dead, unarmed man shot dead by police in Minneapolis in America in 2020, uh, which led to the Black Lives Matter protests, which were in America. They were huge, and, and they, were, they were here as, as well, of course. Um, but, but the media are doing their best to separate us again. We mustn't allow that. Let's get on to Nigel Farage, and let's Nigel and reform. And this is a tough one, and I might lose a few viewers over this, may lose a few subscribers. Do you know what? I actually don't care, because I've just got to tell you as I see it, right? What's the point otherwise? Since the riots, we've needed a political leader, haven't we? We've needed someone to stand up, tell it as it is, be truthful, say all the things that are uncomfortable and uh, show some leadership. Nigel, we thought, many of us thought, some of you do still feel that he's the man. And I've always been, up until recently, a big fan of Nigel, but Unless he's got something up his sleeve, unless he's being very cagey. And if you are, Nigel, I apologise for digging you out. I don't want to dig you out. I voted for reform. I even rode all the way down to Plymouth to support two of your candidates in the last election. Did my best to get you as many votes as I possibly could. But I haven't seen any leadership from you, my friend. I haven't seen any. I haven't seen any will or any willing for you to show some leadership since those young girls were killed. Um, I'm sorry, I haven't seen any leadership, any leadership qualities. And this week, look at this week, we've lost a true patriot in Peter Lynch. You've said nothing so far at least, and it's getting to the point now where even if you do, it's going to be a bit too late. Where are you standing up for Peter Lynch and his family? I said it in the video with Andrew Bridgen. We don't leave our dead lying in the field. We take them home with us 
We bury them and we pay them their due respects. That's what leaders do. That's what people do when they stand together. And it feels like you guys in reform have left Peter lying in the field, willing to forget him. Well, we're not going to forget him. This movement, patriots across the country, will not forget Peter Lynch. And we will try and get justice for him. A granddad that won't be going home for Christmas. And that particularly touched me with Peter being a grandfather. Just like you, Nigel, I said it on a video the other night. You're a granddad. How would your grandkids feel if granddad wasn't coming home for Christmas? And what was his crime? Meaningless. In the grand scheme of things, absolutely meaningless. And he's gone. He's gone from this world. It's just unforgivable and unthinkable. But Nigel, you know, I don't know if you want to listen to me or not. It doesn't matter, I guess. You'll probably watch this if you get to see it and think, who's this mug, who's this idiot? Well, I'll tell you who I am, mate. I'm the person that's telling you what a lot of people are thinking. And what they're thinking is, you've lost the plot. And you're losing support faster than I think you could even imagine. I'll go as far as saying this. After the riots, after the way that some people were treated and your failure to stick up for them, your failure to not necessarily stand up for Tommy, but not to throw him under a bus at least, which you've done on a couple of occasions recently. That's unforgivable for a lot of people. Some of us are big enough to look past that and say, OK, well, it's wrong, but we'll look at the bigger picture. But the Peter Lynch incident this week is a step too far for a lot of people. I'm in a lot of WhatsApp groups, dozens of WhatsApp groups. And your name is absolute mud today within all of those groups. Why? Because you're not the leader that we're looking for. Well, that's the way it's looking, Nigel. I don't know who's advising you, but you've got to read the room better than this. You've got hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of potential supporters out there, Nigel. But you're losing them very quickly. And when Robert Jenrick wins the Tory party leadership, reform could be over. Reform could be finished. Because he's out reforming reform. Robert Jenrick is very cleverly and very dangerously, in my opinion, out Farage in Farage. Robert Jenrick is sounding more like Donald Trump than Donald Trump, let alone Nigel Farage. And he's going to sweep all of that support that you have you had, he's going to sweep it all up, he's going to gobble it all up, and in just under five years' time, we'll end up with another rotten Tory government, and we're back to square one. Because whilst he talks a good game, I don't trust him one little bit. Why? Because he's a Tory, and we all know that we can't trust the Tories. The trouble is, Nigel, is that you are sounding more like a Tory by the day. You're sounding more like a Tory than the Tories. Unless you've got something up your sleeve. And if you have, I apologise. But frankly, I'm beginning to doubt it. Because if you have got something up your sleeve, now is the time to play it. If you've got a hand to show, now is the time to hand it. Out, show it to the people. Because make no mistake, Nigel. The British people were at our wit's end. We are at the end of our tether. We have had enough. We are worn down. We are tired of being abused. We have had enough of being forced to become second-class citizens in our own country. We are sick to death of our children being indoctrinated by the hard left in the schools, in the universities, in the colleges. 
We are sick to death of unions getting together to smash the fascists. The only fascists that we'll see on Saturday, and by the way, you won't be there, will you? The only fascists, the real fascists that we'll see on Saturday will be on the opposing side. We need a leader, Nigel. And we need one now. Is it you? And if it isn't you, maybe, just maybe, you should step aside. If you're not up to the job, I get it. We're of a very similar age. I think you're a bit younger than me. I don't think I'd have it in me to do what you're doing right now. As men, our best years have passed. We're not in our prime anymore, right? Things become harder. I get that, pal. I get that, mate. I really do. But if you've got to the position that you're in now and you've worked very hard to get there, an MP at last, if you're finding this task too difficult, hand the job over to someone that can do it properly. Hand the job over to a leader, whether that be Rupert Lowe, whether that be Lee Anderson. My choice would be Ben Habib. Why are people like Ben not even in the party? Why are people like Ben, why have they been removed? Ben is a leader. Ben is a great man. Ben tells the truth. Ben says it as it is. Ben is a leader that we need. Rupert Lowe could be a leader. Lee Anderson could certainly be a leader. But the silence from Reform UK right now is absolutely deafening. And it's not going down well, Nigel. It's not going down well at all. I spoke to one of your parliamentary candidates about an hour ago because despite what you might think and what you might say 99% of your people support this movement, support Tommy because we're all patriots, we're all good kind, honest, caring patriots and he said to me, Paul you know what I know things aren't good and I know that Nigel isn't making much of a fist of things at the moment, he said, but let's be honest, if there was a general election tomorrow, you'd still vote reform, right? And do you know what my answer was? No, I probably wouldn't. And you know why? Because at the moment, reform have got absolutely no chance of winning the next general election. None. No chance whatsoever. And I'll tell you why. Because people are starting not to believe in the leader. And once that happens, it's all over. And that would be a massive shame. Because the, the truth of the matter is, if there was another general election tomorrow, I would vote for a dog. If there was a chance of that dog getting rid of this Labour government. And if that meant voting Conservative again, even though I've said I'd never ever vote Conservative again in my life, if I had to vote tactically to get rid of this Labour government, I'd do it, because we have to get rid of this Labour government via the ballot box. We have to. Otherwise, there'll be no Great Britain, no United Kingdom left worthy of us mentioning or trying to recognise. So that's the position with me, with reform right now. I think they're in trouble. I think they need leadership. There's something not right about reform. There's something not right about it. I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it. But something doesn't smell right for me. Um, I don't know. UKIP, Nick, Nick Tanconi seems like a good guy, but let's be honest, what are the chances of UKIP winning the next general election? About the same as Fulham winning the European Cup next year. In other words, zero. So whilst they're good as a pressure group and I like a lot of their policies, we're back to the choice of Labour or Conservative. If reform can't find the courage 
to pull their goddamn finger out and show some leadership. Leadership, Nigel. We need a leader. We have one, and they're going to send him to jail next week. So where's our political leader? Who's going to speak up for our man when he gets sent to jail? Because you ain't, are you? You'll be happy to sit there and watch him rot. Well, we don't want Tommy to become another Peter. We don't want any more Peters. We want a leader. And we want one now. And if that's not you, if you're not prepared to stand up and be our leader, then please, mate, let someone else have a go. Let someone else take the reins. Let someone else spread the message that the British people want to hear. And let's get the next general election won. This ain't I'm a celebrity get me out of here. This is the future of our green and pleasant land. We cannot afford to lose this battle. Are you the real deal? Or are you just a pretender? I'm just a regular guy asking the questions. The problem you've got, mate, is that there's millions of people behind me asking the same thing. Only you can answer it. Right, that's it. See you soon.